Say y'all say I'm in the middle of an interview with Don't Be Afraid Media, the next tip channel on YouTube. So I'm gonna gotta call you back. Uh, I'm from Midland, Texas, bro. Um, I know you you're very you know a lot about Twisted Black. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know a lot about Midland too. Yeah. yeah. Growing up, everybody said someone from Midland told them. I never knew the full story. Uh, yeah, they did. Yeah, they did. Uh, if you listen to the tape, yeah, yeah, they did. Yeah. Uh, you know, he called out their name. That's what got him caught up. Yeah, it's fucking with them people. Yeah, he called out their name. Uh, I wouldn't do it now. Uh, you know, it, it, it resurrect the old demons. Uh, but uh, let me just say this. If me and you doing something together. You bring me into it or however, right? But we doing it together. And we ten toes down in this. And I get knocked. And I keep my end of the bargain. I stay down. I don't say nothing. Uh, once you don't keep your end of the bargain, and I can't talk to you, and we can have the kind of conversation for me to get the understanding that I need to understand why you're not keeping your end of it. Most of it is break on me and make the phone call to the FBI agent and say, hey, I'm ready to talk. Uh, you know, without saying too much, you know, it's kind of what happened. Uh, you know, your nigga in jail, he's seeing you flossing. Uh, and then a lot of time, man, and, uh, a lot of times, Twisted Black, one of the first rappers in America, homie, uh, to have his lyrics used against him in, in, in the federal court here. Damn. He's one of the first rappers in the United States of America. This is government court open documents. He had a song that was called, I'm going to cook my way to the top, talking about cooking crack. They use those lyrics in their sentences. So if you read the myth in Odessa or Harold, it, the prosecutor bring that up. I'm gonna cook my, and they use that whole song. And so they, he ended up getting three 30 year sentences. Uh, but when you listen to that album, uh, he taunted the feds. He taunted law enforcement who could be sitting back or, or, or was sitting back watching and listening. Uh, the songs they make, homie, uh, it's, an inv it's an open invitation for a, a, a agent with aspirations, a young agent with aspirations, homie. We forget these are young people that's coming into the FBI. Uh, they like rap music. They got cousins. They got nieces. And so not, not, not only does these rappers um, do they make it easy for the FBI to get them? They also make it fun. It's great entertainment to watch these guys as they make confessions and give hints about true events. They give, they give interviews and they openly talk about crimes. Most of them are involved in crimes that were never solved. But they're talking about crimes and giving names of other people who was once involved in these crimes. That if the right detectives, the right agents, the right agency, if they sit down and say, okay, go back and look at this case. All right, I remember that guy. They could, they put the dots together, homie. When did gangsters start talking? So we got gangster rap. Gangster rap is nothing more than making self-confessions of the crimes you've committed, whether you used to sell drugs, whether your homeboy did it. That's all they're doing, homie. These are self-confessions. So, Do you think Rallo stayed solid on his case? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rallo stayed solid. But who you go tell on? The plug? Yeah, yeah. He's showing a million dollars on our plane. Then people weren't paying attention to him. The people was not paying attention to him until he started fucking with the police on the side of the street, saying, but I make more money than you. 